everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I want to do an NCLEX review over chronic bronchitis versus emphysema. What I want to do in this lecture is I want to show you how these two conditions are the same and how they differ. And in the previous video I covered COPD and I went over in depth the nursing interventions and the medications. So if you are not familiar with that material, I really recommend that you check out those videos as well. And a playlist should be popping up so you can access that. And as always, over here on the side or in the description below, you can access the quiz that will go along with this lecture. So let's get started. First, let's start out talking about how these two conditions are the same. Okay, they are both categorized under the term COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Now, both of these conditions, they limit airflow. So in your blood gases, what you will see is you will see a low oxygen level, but a high carbon dioxide level. Because what's happening is that enough not enough oxygen is getting in, so there will be low oxygen in the blood, and your body's not exhaling the waste product of metabolism known as carbon dioxide. So you will get an acid base imbalance known as respiratory acidosis with these two conditions. The second thing that they share is that these patients have the inability to fully exhale. So what happens is that they take a breath in, um, they exhale, then they take another breath in, but from that previous breath, they had residual leftover. So they're just gonna add from that second inhalation more lung volume to the lungs. And what's gonna happen is that over time, these lungs are gonna become hyperinflated. And as you will see here in a second, when we go over the patho of these two conditions, they their patho is a little bit differently on how the body responds to what's going on. And um, these two conditions are irreversible. There's no cure. Cases from patient to patient vary. Some patients can have it very mild. Some patients can have a very severe case of it. Some patients can have a mixture of both of these conditions. And the main cause is usually due to inhalation of some type of irritant, such as smoking. Medications, which I covered in depth in part two of COPD, um, include uh, bronchodilators, corticosteroids, theophylline, which is a methyl xanthine, Phosphodiesterase 4 inhibitors like rofumilas, and this, these two conditions are diagnosed with spirometry. So let's look at chronic bronchitis first. Okay, the main issue with chronic bronchitis is inflammation of the bronchioles, and you get excessive mucus production from hyperplasia of the goblet cells. So as you can see here in this illustration, what happens is that over time, say that the person's a smoker, it's going to cause all the inhalation of the smoke is going to cause inflammation to these bronchioles. And what happens is that they become really red, inflamed, deformed, and um, the oxygen that's trying to get in has a very limited airway to get in from here to there, which is the alveolar sac where gas exchange is going to occur. Then your goblet cells are going to start producing copious amounts of mucus. So then you have another problem. So that air can't get in through this narrow airway and then you have all this mucus that the air will try to pass through, which won't happen. So you'll have low amounts of oxygen getting here to the alveolar sac for gas exchange and you will be retaining carbon dioxide, which what's happened is that you have your pulmonary artery and your pulmonary vein. This is where this capillary bed is originating from. And remember, your pulmonary artery brings unoxygenated blood to the lungs to get oxygenated through these sacs. Then the pulmonary vein will take that oxygen back to the heart to be pumped through the aorta to go to the body and replenish the tissues. So what's happening is that you can't get this there to do its job because of this obstruction of the inflammation and the mucus. But your capillary bed is working just fine. You just have problem with ventilation. So what's going to happen is that with this condition, chronic bronchitis, you're going to get a VQ mismatch. Okay. So what is VQ? V stands for perfusion. And this is the amount of air that is reaching the alveoli. So here we have low ventilation. Q stands for perfusion. This is the blood that reaches the alveoli through the capillary bed. And here in chronic bronchitis, that is working. So we have a mismatch in it. Our ventilations are low 
and it's not matching our perfusion. Now let's flip it over and look at emphysema. The main issue with emphysema is damage to those alveolar sacs. And what happens is that over time these sacs lose their ability to inflate and deflate. They lose elasticity. And this is from, um, let's say that this patient is a smoker. That smoke is constantly entering into the lungs and these sacs and the body does not like this. It's an irritant. So um, the body um, sends off an inflammatory response. The neutrophils actually release a substance that will cause these sacs to break down. So in a since the body does it to itself. And what will happen is that you will start getting air trapping. So the patient takes a breath in and there's no beautiful capillary bed like how we have over here to do our gas exchange and to for those sacs to deflate and get rid of that carbon dioxide. So what will happen is that you will get hyperinflation of the lungs, you'll get that air trapping, and um, you will get poor perfusion because you don't have a good capillary bed, and you get poor ventilation. So over here in emphysema, you're going to get a match VQ defect. However, compared over here, you had a VQ mismatch. And again, your ventilations are poor over here, your sacs aren't doing their job, and the perfusion, there's, no, there's really no capillary bed here on those sacs to help with gas exchange. So ventilations and perfusions match up. Now let's look at the effects on the body from all of this. With chronic bronchitis, what you're gonna see in these patients from what's going on in the body, you're gonna start seeing cyanosis really from that low oxygen level. Also, they will have an increased lung volume and eventually, because what's gonna happen is um, due to the low oxygen and the high carbon dioxide level, the body is gonna to try to shift blood to hopefully try to get those levels up and down. And whenever it does that, that puts a lot of pressure on your pulmonary artery, which will cause pulmonary hypertension. And if you remember back from our blood flow video, your pulmonary artery comes from the right side of your heart. So if you have all that increased pressure on your pulmonary artery, it's going to overwork that right ventricle where you're gonna start seeing right-sided heart failure, which is known as core pulmonal. So you might see bloating in the abdomen and the legs as a late sign of that. And this is why sometimes um, in nursing school, you may hear your professors refer to these patients with chronic bronchitis as blue bloaters. You see the cyanosis from the low oxygen level and then from the core, core pulmonal, the bloating, edema, and the increased lung volume, they're bloaters, so blue bloaters. And on the flip side, in emphysema, what you're gonna see the effects of what's going on is that you're gonna see hyperventilation because what's happening, you don't have those capillary beds working well, so the body's gonna try to compensate and um, they're gonna hyperventilate, so breathe really fast, like that puffing. Um, constant breathing because what they're trying to do is keep their ox get their oxygen level back up but blow that carbon dioxide off that um, has built up in the blood. And they will actually succeed in this by keeping the oxygen level just where they need it to be to keep this normal pink complexion compared to what's going on in chronic bronchitis. So um, also from where they are hyperventilating, they're constantly using these accessory muscles to hyperventilate. Also, they have hyperinflation of the lungs going on. So the diaphragm has flattened and the diaphragm is what helps you breathe with ease. So they're not gonna be using their diaphragm to breathe as much as people with healthy lungs would. So they'll use these accessory muscles which will build up over time and they will get this barrel chest look where they'll appear puffed out. And these patients sometimes may be referred to as pink puffers. Puffing again from the hyperventilation and um, the puffed out look from the barrel chest and the pink because they keep a pink complexion compared to your patients with chronic bronchitis. So signs and symptoms, the main signs and symptoms to help you differentiate between these two is that with chronic bronchitis, they're gonna have a chronic productive cough that is gonna last greater than three months. This is why it's called chronic instead of acute. And they will have shortness of breath, um, cyanosis, and edema. On the flip side, patients with emphysema, the main things that are different, they will have the shortness of breath too. They will be high, having hyperventilation, so tachypenia, weight loss, and again, a lot of this weight loss comes from their effort to breathe. They're literally breathing. You burn a lot of calories breathing, and they're doing this 
a lot more. So they'll be at risk for weight loss and they will have the barrel chest compared to someone with, with chronic bronchitis. Okay, so that is the differences between chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Now be sure to go to my website, registernursrn.com and take that free quiz and check out my other videos that cover respiratory disorders. And don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and thank you so much for watching.